Hello, and welcome to Tales from the Backlog. My name is Steve Boshier, and I will be your Game Master for the evening. If you've never watched this channel before, this is, uh, this is the Shadows of Arconia channel, named after our 5th edition game that we play on Fridays. Uh, and then on Monday nights, like tonight, we have Tales from the Backlog, where we try out all kinds of other games. This is also, I think I called our Friday game a 5th edition game. That is 5th edition D&D. This, tonight, is 5th edition Shadowrun. And uh, I'm aware that there is a newer edition of Shadowrun than this, but this is the one we're playing because I had it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, here we are. Um, we have some other games coming up. I don't remember what's next week, but I know soon there's going to be Tin Candles and probably another Merkborg in there and, uh, uh, yeah, some stuff. So, Shadowrun is a, if you're not familiar with it, it is basically exactly D&D &D plus cyberpunk. Uh, it's elves and dwarves and orcs in uh, in the dark future so why don't we have uh have a little character introduction starting with jason i'm jason i'm playing duffy i'm a i'm a good old boy kung fu man magic adept guy good I'm old really boy good old boy means human well, yeah, but my my ethnicity is good old boy. Gotcha. Ethnicity gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> my meta type is human. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. I guess should I go next then? Yeah, yeah. go for it, Kenny. Oh, okay, so uh, I'm Kenny, and I shall be playing Harlequin, uh, a very quiet, um, uh, elvish. Uh, mercenary uh, shadow runner who uh, who loves to uh, use guns and he is sort of with with such lightning speed that one would assume that he must have augmentation uh, cyber augmentation but he doesn't it's just this sort of natural power that he can imbue uh, so he is also an adept um, but focused on gun combat and he doesn't nope. have that for what reason because it's hard <laughs> right because I, I remember from second edition and note for the viewers at home kenny but, is playing a harlequin not he's the, not playing the harley quinn no, just i just imagine like an elven john wick that just wears a harlequin mask so you never see his real face yeah i did come across the harlequin that jason t was talking about in the wiki as i was right. learning shadow one lore <laughs> And I'd even forgotten about that. I was just like, ooh, Elvin with like a Harlequin mask, thinking like the old Warhammer stuff. Like I wasn't even yes. thinking about like the Shadowrun lore. There's a lore? We're supposed to get stuck on that? <laughs> yeah. See, I just immediately leapt to the obscure Agatha Christie short story collection. Nice. <laughs> but, you know. That's good. And speaking of me, I will be playing when the technomancer because i enjoy a challenge uh and <laughs> uh i don't i didn't quite know what i was getting myself into uh when i said yeah human technomancer sounds like fun uh so i'm really gonna do my best uh if you're watching this to learn how to play a technomancer this might not be the video for you i'm gonna do my best if you want to watch me figure out on the fly uh, on the fly, meaning after three hours of reading and still uh, not quite getting it, uh, then by all means, this should be entertaining for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all kind of in that boat. Uh, I know Jason and Kenny have. Yeah, Jason and Kenny have. Notes, character sheet thing. Yep. Yeah. Right. Am I? Can you guys hear me? Yep, I hear yes. you. Oh, okay. I was just saying uh, uh, we're all kind of in the same boat in terms of our ability to actually play this game. Um, uh, Jason and Kenny have experience with previous editions of Shadowrun, but Sarah and I have none. And we all had a good 30-minute conversation just now about <laughs> how we don't know what we're doing. So we're going <laughs> to do our best. 
It is a bit so like being saying, like, hey, let's go dancing. Forward. Let's do classical ballet. That sounds like something we can pick up in a couple hours. Yeah. So. <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah. Going to go for it. All right. So we are playing a mission tonight that I grabbed off of the internet. Are you kidding me. For a. Hey, uh, guys, give me a sec. Oh, I'm okay. so sorry. Okay. Uh -oh. That sounds like a phone call from a manager, is what that, Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I can, I guess I can do the intro anyway. I am, uh, uh, I'm running a mission called Chasing the Wind, which cost a whopping five bucks and was a, uh, it's designed as a one shot, but it describes itself as a one shot for a four hour game. We have a three-hour game, and as mentioned, we um, don't know how to play it. So I'm going to be truncating it a bit. There's a couple of scenes in here that are just basically nothing but setup, so we're going to go ahead and skip past those and get right to the meat of it. Uh, and I will tell you guys more once we have our, our Duffy back. Duffy. Right on cue. There he is. Oh... I, I just muted you, Jason, so you'll have to unmute real quick. Because we were hearing your phone conversation. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no, no. I just didn't, didn't know what was no. going to be said. So I thought it'd be safer for that, you to. That, that, was, that was work intruding on my game life. Boo. I called that one. <laughs> yes, yeah. did. So All right. what did. Did I miss everything? No, I just was describing uh, that I got a. I got a, a mission off the internet, and I'm going to be cutting it short because we don't know how to play. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's the fun of this stream. We try to I, learn a new game every week, and sometimes it's really hard to do it. <laughs> you're challenging ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, we're all in it for the challenge. Yes. Um, so the mission is called Chase in the Wind. Um since nobody has played fifth edition before i'm assuming none of you have played this one it is Ooh. going to take place in the city of chicago which uh as jason mentioned in our discord earlier has been known as bug city uh mm. ever since a number of years ago a large portion of chicago um known as the zone uh, it ha was invaded. Well, there are two couple things happened. There was a there was a nuclear bomb that went off in well, a building. You're getting you're getting ahead of yourself there. Uh oh. There was there was the bugs, and then the bomb was in response to the bugs. Hmm. Ah, I believe that I read the opposite actually. That the bomb was first, and then the bugs also happened. But. Uh, I only, I maybe, maybe misread it or am misremembering it. I don't know. I could uh, be misremembering from the novel that I read <laughs> 30 years ago. Cool. Well, the point is there was a nuke and there were these bug spirits that came and, and overran the place. So a huge section of Chicago has been turned into... Uh, the containment zone, the CZ, as they call it. Uh, so this area here is the zone. And uh, the bug menace has been largely dispersed at the, at the time of our game. But the zone is still kind of a, kind of a no man's land. Certain mm. corps are trying to change that to a certain extent. Um, but, um, you know, it's still this, it's this walled off area that supposedly people can now go in and out of freely again. Uh, but in practice, uh, not so much. People, there's, there's a social stigma associated with people from in there. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's just kind of a hellhole. Yeah, anyway, here's my little, nice. here's my little thing. So. That's uh, the gist of Chicago. As you can see from the map, most of Chicago is still just Chicago, but uh, a huge chunk of it there uh, is now the containment zone. So 
You guys are a Shadowrunner crew working in Chicago. There are quite a few Shadowrunner crews around Chicago because it's kind of a prime spot for it. Um, but uh, you have a fixer who set you up uh, with a woman. Actually, let me see if I have her. I believe I do. This woman, <clears throat> the Quantum Princess, is your current client. And she has sent you out into the zone to uh, replace some nodes. She wants to restore matrix connectivity there. Um, so I mentioned that I'm going to be skipping a couple of scenes to get to the meat of this adventure. There's a scene where you meet her. And actually, there's a scene where you get a call from your fixer. And then there's a scene where you meet her. And then there's a, a couple of scenes where you do the job. And that's all set up. So I'm wondering if the person who called this a one shot knew what they were talking about, to be honest. But <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, a a one shot hour. in the same sense that the quick start guide was 30 pages. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so it's on par. We're all having some good fun at the expense of Shadowrun today. But I think we can all it's all in love. It's all in love. Please don't give us hate for. So anyway, shadow run. <laughs> throwing shade at shadow run, <laughs> throwing shade. Yeah, so throwing shade. Great job, you guys. You've placed the two nodes that the quantum princess hired you to place, and just oh, as, wow. just as you, the new matrix relay goes online with the upgraded component uh, intended, as I said, to restore matrix connectivity to parts of the zone. Um. As soon as it goes online, uh, your comm link starts flashing. And when I say you, I mean, which one of you do you guys think probably takes the call from your fixer? When? He takes the call to what? Not me. From your fixer. I'd say Harle Harlequin, right? Harlequin barely talks. That'd be a very silent call. Okay, so Duffy... Uh, sure, du Duffy. Duffy, Duffy can take... Duffy's the social one of the group. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently yeah. so. He's certainly not the technical one of the group. <laughs> well, I do have a good charisma score, but well, we'll see about that. We'll see uh, about that. <laughs> so your your fixer's face appears uh, on your display. So I've been trying to get a hold of you. Looks like the work's gonna flow in today. I got another Johnson on the line, and he uh, he insisted on holding for you. Oh yeah, we're I mean we're worth it. What's the, what's the job? All right. Well, your fixer's face blinks out and is replaced by this guy. Hmm. He says, Oi, bloke! I'm Simon Andrews, Master Lofweir. Would like to employ your services for a data retrieval. Uh, you guys would know uh, Lofweir is a dragon. Uh, yeah. A, a very famous dragon who runs one of the corporations in this... Uh, in this world, one of the big ones. So, um, Cedar Krupp, I think, is that the one that Lofware runs. But, um, that fits. Hold on, I lost my page. Anyway, uh, it says, Master Lofware would like to employ your services for a data retrieval. See, we lost track of one of our laboratories in the recent mess. You ought to check out the lab. Secure its contents and retrieve a data packet from its node. I'm authorized to pay you 3,000 new yen for the job. Good deal for a few hours work, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we're, we're good for that. Just, just download that information to my, my... Download that information to my talkie device here, <laughs> and we'll be right on it. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, all right. It's uh, it's Janus Industries, fifteen oh one North Greenview Avenue, just off I ninety. Where in town? What part of town is that in? Okay, game let's, master. Yeah, let's see. That is. Let me get Simon out of the way here. So it's off I ninety. It says. 
just inside the northern edge of the noose. I don't see anything on here called the noose. I don't know if that's something that. That Chicago sounds vaguely would... Chicago familiar. Yeah, like is if... that like the loop? Like, is I that don't know, what but, but here's I ninety. Like, down in the west side, or no? I don't know enough about Chicago to know where exactly where on the map the loop would be. But yeah, I got no idea. Hmm. Um, oh, uh, let's see. There's a there's a key right here, of course. Uh, where is Janus? Janus is not on here. <laughs> Uh, it's a major location in the adventure. It's not marked on the map that came with the adventure. Nice. Yeah. All right. We won't worry about it. We won't worry about it. Uh, it's it's along I ninety. That's where hmm. it is. Maybe some so Chicago in the can zone. Jump off. Uh, it is. Uh, it is in the zone. Hmm. Okay. What is the noose? I don't know if that's Shadowrun lingo or just Chicago lingo. But uh, it's somewhere. <laughs> so um, yeah, he'll he'll send you the address. Um, he's saying uh, he doesn't have access codes because the codes were lost during the second crash. But um, yeah, uh, to reiterate, you guys just need to secure the contents of the lab, retrieve a data packet from the node that is in the lab. Okay. Whoa. What, what, this key, guys. What was that noise? Sorry, my tablet keeps going to sleep. Ah. I, I don't know that that explains that, but okay. Uh, <laughs> and then I dropped it when I tried to turn it back on again. That explains it. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> I'm just going to use it as a laptop. So um, no sooner has your uh, no sooner has your call with Simon Andrews ended uh, than your comm link rings again, and lo and behold, it is your same fixer back on the line. He says, "Hey, I told you the work was going to flow in. I got I actually got another Johnson on the line." Oh wow. So g give, give me a minute. Give me a minute. Uh, I, all right, he's I, waiting though. I put him on hold. Okay. Guys, we, we got another job. Like, well, we, success begets success. I mean, um, yeah, but how much can I mean how, one person can only do so many things at one time. That is true. There is Nothing to stop us from saying that it's good to be in demand. Let me put it like that. And we can listen to this other person's pitch. And if we like it, we can say, well, we're, we're, we're booked for the next couple days. But when do you need your job done by? And see if we can't do both. Certainly always good to hear both. Here, let, g g give me the, give me the, I'll take over. I'll take this call. Okay, well, the, you, the, I, it's my comm link. I paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. I was forced to pay for all this nonsense. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I understand entirely. I made a Google spreadsheet. Uh, uh, so, but uh, uh, a matrix, yeah, just, just a give, matrix give, spreadsheet. Give, give me, yes, a matrix spreadsheet. <laughs> Duffy, What's are you the, gonna uh, give when the comm link? Or are you gonna uh, just get back on yourself? You can hold it. You can hold it. Just hold it up so it's like pointed at me. Well, I mean, assuming. Can I transfer it to your comm link? I mean, I'm assuming we've got some like. Uh... Fine, just do it. We we paid yeah, okay, for the. We paid I'm, for I'm the doing, I'm doing it. Doing <laughs> it. <laughs> 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 your comm. Yes. Uh, so okay. It to the 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 team's uh, WhatsApp function so yes, we yes. share it so there is some technical glitches and actually the fixer just calls back to winscom <laughs> um oh hello it... sorry about that we i i think we had a bad connection yeah i think uh... duffy pressed some wrong buttons <laughs> well you got some meaty fingers yeah yeah all right listen uh let me put you on with this guy yes by all means uh so this is the new guy 
Um, How may we help? He says, he's a, this is a troll. Uh, and you can see how he's dressed. It's kind of like, it's like a dark suit, but he has kind of like an Aztec neck piece instead of the tie. And um, just sort of covered in that style of jewelry. He says, um, uh, Hola, I am Juan Shiwit. If you have the will, I have the work. We are very interested in hearing uh, what work you are looking for. A young woman we... has gone missing in the CZ. Mm. You will recover her. You will deliver her to Nick Ryder, who is a Lone Star officer for whom I am doing a favor. I will pay each of you 4,000 new yen for completing this contract. This a very serious offer for a very serious and emergent situation. Uh, you said, I'm sorry, Nick Ryder was the name of the contact? Yes, I will send you his details when you report that you have acquired the target. May I ask who, what information you have as to her last location? or where she might be, or if someone might have taken her, or if she has simply perhaps gotten missing? She is a human female named Samantha. Mm -hmm. She is sinless and homeless, last seen roaming the streets in the Maker Collective. That's a, a mini district just south of I-90 in Harwood Heights. Uh, once you have Samantha, you will meet Mr. Ryder at Chicago's own pizzeria in Northside. Which coincidentally is the same place that you met, uh, the Quantum Princess in the scene that totally happened earlier. Hmm. So you said Harwood Heights? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, clarification. So the noose is the ruined neighborhood where the bomb went off near the Sears Tower. Mm -hmm. So that would be in the zone then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, deep. So, which is yeah, pretty, and it is. It's like either that three or that A, I believe. Or actually, wait, we're, uh, I'm looking at a Google map. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. There's a little bump there. If it's that C section. Uh, it's right where uh, the 290 runs straight in. All right. Oh, that this is 290 here. Yeah, so like right straight in, like that A or 3 is where that's the news right there. All righty. Um, cool. So you've got these two job offers. Um, one from Juan and one from uh, Simon. Juan has offered to pay you 4000 each. Simon said 3000 Neither of them mentioned a deadline. Hmm. And both of them in the collective zone. Before uh, we hang up with Mr. Uh, uh, Kihudel, um, I did have a other question for him, which was, and when we find the young lady, is she expecting to be picked up and brought to Mr. Ryder? Or is this going to be new information for her that her presence is desired outside of the zone? I cannot speak to Samantha's state of mind. I do not know how she will react to your presence. Does she know who you are? And if she understands that we are bringing her to meet you, will she wish to come with us? She or... does not know me, nor are you bringing her to me. You are bringing her to my contact. With, with a very broken elvish accent, uh, the only two words that are, uh, three words that come out of Harlequin's mouth behind the mask are, Dead or alive? 
Uh, Juan looks perturbed at having his one-on-one -on -one conversation interrupted in this way. Um, this is my colleague, Mr. Harlequin. Uh, we speak in the same voice on the same family plan. <laughs> Amusing. To answer your question, Mr. Harlequin, we wish her alive. There will be no payment if she is dead. Understood. Is there a shadow run equivalent of a inside check? Um, yeah, there probably is. Uh, what's on your sheet that looks like that? Let's see. Let's see. Judge intentions. That looks like a pretty good insight check to me. Mm. Uh, let's see. We're going skills. Okay, so uh, charisma plus intuition. <laughs> All right, first roll of the game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, go ahead and roll that. Okay. Fives or sixes are hits. Copy that. Uh, and I maxed out my stats, and so this is going to be a roll of ten dice. All right. Wow. So... Let me see. So that is going to be, uh, out of 10, only two hits, which is actually statistically exactly correct. Okay. Um, so he told you at the beginning of the call that he is doing this as a favor to Nick Ryder, who is a cop. Mm. Um he said a Lone Star officer. You guys know that, that that's a police agency here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he, with that check, you can see what I already told you, which is that he's agitated that you guys are making this conversation more complicated than it needs to be. Um, and that he is telling the truth. He's doing this as a favor to someone else. Um, he possibly maybe wants something from this other guy, Nick Ryder, but um, he, when he, you asked about the girl and, and how she would be, like, he straight up didn't know and didn't care. Like, this, okay. is, this isn't his thing. He's doing it for the other guy. Cop. Oh, no. We're back. Are we back? We're that back. was exciting. Just a little flicker. Watch! <laughs> We're in the Matrix. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Everybody's back, right? Okay. Everyone can hear me? Yep, totally. Yes. Okay, great. All right. I'm good. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, unless anybody wants to interject, uh, that phone call will end. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so what is it that you guys would like to do first? Again, uh, Janus Industries inside the zone um or the maker collective well, well do, do either of you know where this maker collective place is oh i do actually that one is on the map that is just at the edge of the zone let me bring the map back mm -hmm. uh that one is h hey there's the 90. yeah so that's h right there Wow. And, and the pizzeria where we were supposed to take her is north too, right? So yeah. that may be the closest to go to. Yeah, and you guys are in the zone right now because you've been setting up these nodes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we do a bit of reconnaissance on both jobs. We can execute whichever one we get ready to... Where we can execute we the easier one first, we'll say, whichever one that turns out to be. Where are we now? Yeah. Um, That's a good question. I got to go back and read that other thing that we didn't do to find that out. Um, Garfield Park. 
just off I-290. Probably here-ish? Let's see. Uh, so Garfield Park Conservatory. Yeah, just off 290. I'm looking at the like an actual real Google map here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, real life locations are fun. <laughs> yeah. So, oops. It is just, so it's actually more, so you actually go back down towards the 290, and it's more towards, like, uh, to the right. So probably just top left of the B. Oh, like here? Right there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's where you guys are. And, and um, yeah, Maker Collective is up here at the H. And then okay. we got to go towards the three anyways. The, to the go. Janus Industries would be at the around where the three is. Correct. Yeah. Well, I so, mean, I don't know about you two, but it seems like we could just knock this Janus Industries thing out and then head over to the Maker Collective and not have to do a lot of backtracking through this irradiated wasteland. I concur. That seems logical. Harlequin just gives like a slight nod. Okay. <sighs> so you guys are going to head up to Janice? Yes. Mm -hmm. cool. Is this Janice like J-A-N-U-S or Janice like G-E-N-Y-S? Janus, J A N U S. Okay. Uh, so you guys find the place. Um, I actually have an image of it. It is this right triangle of a building here. Um, oh, I got a thing. I'm going to read you. Uh, by now, you are accustomed to dry. I forgot. I think I forgot to mention it's dead of winter. Uh, by now, you're almost accustomed to driving in the wind and snow. At least it beats walking any distance in a Chicago winter. You approach 1501 North Greenview Avenue and see a triangular brick building lined with boarded up windows. The building is dark. Looks like it might have been a school in a previous life, but now it bears the word Janus in some techie looking letters above the barricaded glass doors in front. Uh, at the southeast corner of the building, a lone door lies open, hanging precariously from one hinge and pinned open by a snowdrift. It appears somebody has gotten here before us quite some time ago, and probably many someones. Probably, but it looks like we got an easy way in right here. Yeah. Um, so the description here mentioned a door in the southeast corner. There actually isn't one on this map uh, in keeping with everything tonight. So uh, I'm just going to say that this window's a door. That's the one. Okay. Oh, true. Yeah, southwest. The doors are to the southwest. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the front entrance, which is not the gotcha. door that's open. Um huh. So, yeah, I think there's kind of just supposed to be one over in this area. It's not, not crucial, not crucial story information, but yeah, you can get in. Um, so as you can see, it's a general office space on the ground floor. It's pretty uh, empty of people. Completely deserted. Uh, hold on one second, guys. Oh, here's something. He is somebody's here. Uh-oh. The little one's up. Uh. I can go grab him. All right. Sorry about that. Oh, oh we lost you're Duffy. muted. Hang on. Got to unmute yourself. I'm I'm muted. I only muted nope, my. You're still, still muted. muted. <laughs> They're saying I'm muted. So the oh, viewers, a, the viewers, the overall, his, the, the viewers hear me through weird. a different mic than you guys. Nope, I muted my you. mic. To, I muted weird. my mic to the stream. Sorry, I didn't mean to permanently mute you. Oh, I guess I'd better unmute myself, guys. Yeah, 
Okay, Yay, you, you, you guys haven't been hearing me. I was explaining to our viewers. No. The viewers hear through a different mic than you guys do. I uh, muted okay. the mic going to the stream when Johnny <laughs> came in the room. I didn't bother muting you guys. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's what happened. And then I guess you muted me anyway. Uh, <laughs> yes. And then I also, also, you can mute someone else on a Skype call, but they have to unmute themselves, which is something Correct. I forgot yes. about. Yes. <laughs> which prevents you from just deciding to listen to somebody. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're back. Uh, so this room is empty of people. Uh, this whole floor is empty of people. Uh, it looks like it's been abandoned for a while. Uh, no, <clears throat> no sign of life here uh, within at least a week or two. Minimum. Hmm. Well, I want to. I want to um, activate my astral perception. Okay. And see if I can't get a different look at this space. All right. So, uh, what's that do? <laughs> <laughs> It lets me see the um, astral. Uh, the, I can see the astral plane as like an as like sort of an AR okay. to the the material plane. Um, or as I like to think about it from Young Guns, we're going to the spirit world. <laughs> <laughs> A dog. A dog. A you dog. see the size of that chicken? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Spend so, the rest of this game trying to work as many Young Guns references as this weekend. Challenge accepted. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the name of our, our group is now Young Guns. Young guns. It yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, the astral plane. Um, how am I going to describe what you see on the astral plane? Uh, in this, on this floor of the building, you see nothing in particular of interest on the astral plane, but you, you are, what do I want to describe? You see actually kind of, um, like little vapors kind of like when you see the heat making the road waver on a really hot day um as something uh faint but faint but unpleasant emanates up through the floor well guys i think there's something under the building that might be kind of might be kind of shady Something maybe a little untoward. All right. Mm -hmm. at, w at which point, uh, you know, Harlequin just sort of out from underneath his trench coat pulls out his uh, his um, assault rifle, his Yamaha Raiden. Okay. Loads it up. He it wasn't and, loaded. Yeah. No. He had he had the safety on. Okay, but he believes in gun safety. Believes in, so he doesn't walk around with a loaded assault rifle. No, no, that would be insane. I, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you're kind of violating some shadow runner tenant. <laughs> uh, all right, so um, there's no gun safety in shadow. None. I have a question before we move forward. Um, just in terms of my check, this is something I've actually not been able to quite figure out from the book but as a technomancer can i just sense what is around me is there a check for that i have everything i find here is all about just it, everything starts with like you hack into the system with this action so i'm not sure how if i have the ability to send systems um you do as a general yeah. rule but there's nothing he here Okay. Um, this is an abandoned office. Any systems that were in here at one point uh, are gone, power mm. either taken or just powered down because 
uh, it, they're in the they're in the containment zone, and there's no real functioning grid here. Well, boys, nothing's up and running. I'm blind until we find a, something to turn on so we can find this data packet. I guess I pull out my own gun. Mm -hmm. Is it loaded? Uh, I load it as a free action. I load my gun. Thanks for checking. Duffy, are your guns loaded? Oh, my! these guns? <laughs> they're always loaded. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like that. You kind of did the Henry Cavill arm loading. I, was yeah. lit I literally caught a little clip of that like earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> you got it all the time. Yes. All right. Um, so there's uh, the little red parts here are elevators. Um, how you guys want to do this? And then there's stairs. Well, I mean, we might. There's no power in this place, right? That's true. So we might be better taking them stairs. And they say you're the it dumb one. Does make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Who says that? Somebody, <laughs> not me. <laughs> All right. Here's your basement. Um, as you, as you approach the, uh, largest room down here, which is going to be this one, which is clearly labeled lab with cloning tanks, cloning tanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thus oh, robbing, ominous. thus robbing us of all the suspense that it might've been in this, if I hadn't put that map up right then. Um, as you approach the largest room in the basement, you see a dead dwarf in a lab coat lying in the open doorway, uh, this doorway. Um, his head is cocked at a decidedly unpleasant angle. Two human corpses lie just inside the doorway, one wearing an armor jacket with the Janus uh, Industries logo. Uh, the rest of this room uh, jumps right out of a horror movie at you. Actually, I'm lying. It doesn't say movie. It says Trid, uh -huh. uh, which is a Shadowrun thing. Mm -hmm. So... 12 cloning tanks line the room, 11 containing identical dark-haired human females all in suspended animation. The 12th tank is open, and some of its fluids are spilled across the floor. Uh, there are some tables in here. Upon one of them lies a scalpel, an open med kit, a comm link, and a small medical implant device all covered in dried blood. D Duffy's gonna wander. I up immediately to the look at the ceiling. Tank. Sorry, I got two of you at once there, Duffy. What was that? Well, while well, Wynn is checking the ceiling like a smart person, Duffy's gonna wander up to the closest uh, clone tank. Okay. It's a it's a woman, a dark haired woman. They're yes. all they're all identical. She's not Duffy. Duffy gets he pulls up a meaty fist to it and kind of wraps his knuckle on the uh, tank and asks, now, did we get a picture of this woman we were supposed to be finding? We sure didn't. Asked Fair a enough. lot of questions, but didn't ask that one. Fair enough. One can only hope if we walk up and ask for Samantha that the <laughs> target is going to be honest <laughs> and that we don't grab the wrong Samantha. And having, having said that, Duffy starts actually examining the like tank for any distinguishing uh, anything. Uh, I'm sorry, you're examining what? I'm examining the, 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 that, that nearest uh, cloning tank to see if it has any uh, labels or anything on it. Um, let me see. Labels, no. Um, it I mean, looks, I'm sure. It looks yep. to you like... Um, whatever information may have been stored here about 
these individual cloning tanks would have been digital, not something that you could just like read on the tank. Mm. However, they are still powered. Mm. I was I was just about to ask about that. Yeah, the these That's... clones are not dead. They're just unconscious. So so I'm while sure. we... like there's some power down here. So while while Wynn and Duffy are checking out the ceiling and and the tanks, Harlequin just starts walking the perimeter. Um, you know, his his role is mainly to just supervise and ensure that they're not being ambushed. Okay. Um, to be clear, that's why I'm looking at the ceiling. Right, right. No, I got like, it. <laughs> ambush, yeah. Well, it's not like clinging to it with like spider grip and about to fall on us. Because that's where that's where Wind's mind immediately goes. Okay. It's uh, excuse me. Um, an interesting thing about this room is that. Uh, this uh, adventure booklet provides answers to all sorts of possible questions that you guys might ask based on what I described. Uh, none of them are, hey, tell me about these girls in the tanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the obvious, well, but, yeah. Huh. All right. Well, having satisfied myself that there is no Spider Woman uh not in like a cool superhero way, but in like a mutated, uh, uh, damaged way. Clinging to the possessed by some feeling. kind of spider spirit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I will just take a close look at the tank just to be sure it's not m me and I'm not the missing clone. Uh, <laughs> I assume that I'm not. You're not. But, it's not uh, you. I, okay. That's, uh, that's one... Uh, unfortunate backstory I have avoided, uh, and I will go ahead and uh, <laughs> uh, look around for uh, any kind of uh, computer <laughs> matrix connection node. Uh, yes, you are looking for a matrix connection node. Um, let me see. Uh, you do find the node that you were asked to find in this lab. Um, and you were you were asked to recover the data from the node. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. All good. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to need, uh, in order to activate it, um, I'm going to need a cyber technology plus logic check. Okay. I've got that. Uh, your limit on this is going to be mental. Okay. And the, and the limit's the number of successes you can get. Is that correct? Yes. Sorry, say it again. It was cyber technology plus what? Logic. Yeah. Plus logic. Okay. Cyber technology, is that different than... I have so many different, like, mini-computer skills. Hold on, maybe I'm saying the wrong one. Let me look at your sheets. I have software, hardware, cyber warfare, operating systems, matrix security, uh, computer, just, like, general computer... Um, well, okay. what do you have that you think would apply to activating a, a deactivated node? Hmm. I gotta say, probably just... So cyber technology is a logic skill. Yeah. But that's with cybernetic parts. Oh, okay. Well, this isn't a cybernetic part, so I did get that wrong. Um so how about just uh computer would be yeah logic. just computer yeah it's go just ahead general computer yeah so okay. computer is the computer is the base right. skill for interacting with the matrix okay so i actually my mental limit is going to apply because i have three in computer right. and five in logic so i'm going to max out at seven okay 
And that is uh, three hits. Okay. Um, you are able to activate it. And you can now do what you were asked and bring a copy of the data packet from this node. All right. Or you can open the data packet yourself and read what was going on on the insides of this node the last time it was active. Hell yeah, I'm going to do that. If you do that, I I... if you do that, it will be evident that you opened it when if you deliver a copy of it. Would this be a good time to use my cleaner sprite to uh, assuming that I can open it and then remove the evidence of what I did using yes, my sprite? That is perfect. All right. Okay. Better believe that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. Uh, yeah, I go ahead and open that baby up. All right. Um, so this is a... Uh, it's been severely degraded by the amount of time that it has been without power down here. Mm -hmm. Um but you find a record in here of communications in and out of this lab that paint a picture of experimentations done on someone over the course of about 20 years. Um, someone, someone has been heavily augmented with large amounts of cyberware and there are notations about trying to um, recreate something about this person. I look around at the clone tanks, I'm like, oh, literally. Okay. Recreate, I get it. I wonder if they did, and I'm saying this to. I'm muttering this out loud to Harlequin and Duffy. Like, I wonder if they literally meant they only worked on one person, or when they say one person for 20 years, if they mean just all these iterations of the same. Harlequin, you you, you check the room, right? There's there's nobody else. Whoever the, the, the clone was that presumably, you know, and I kind of wave at the dead bodies. They're not here, right? Do I need to roll a perception check for that? Or have I verified there's nobody in the room? You have thoroughly verified that the only people in the room are the dead dwarf and the two dead humans. Right. Didn't ask, how fresh are those bodies? Now you're starting to ask some questions that there's actually answers to. This is the <laughs> first. This is the first question you guys have asked that they actually expected you to ask. Um, <laughs> we're just like, eh, and just step over them and like, well, right. I was thinking it, but you know, just hadn't gotten around to it yet. Yeah, same. I'm like, there's a bloody scalpel and an implant's been pulled out. There's two uh -huh. dead bodies, and you're like, hey, tell me about the ceiling. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> playing video games, you always look at the ceiling. No, you're not I, wrong. I, I don't blame right. sir for that. No, no. Oh, mm -mm. there's no wrong way to, uh, to do this um give me a either a medicine plus logic or a first aid plus logic on those bodies i will take that one if nobody minds because my i think i took medicine let's see i'm going to assume you you've got better than five dice on it yeah a, uh, yeah four uh medicine oh Seven. maybe i did oh Seven i took notes. first aid instead the of the numbers medicine. of dice you can roll in this game are huge yeah. yes uh, ah, bummer. No hits on that one for me. Uh, did you get a glitch? Oh, what's a glitch? If if half or more of your dice showed a one. No, I just avoided that because two out of five were ones. I guess oh. I'll look with, you said first aid and logic together? Yeah, or medicine and logic, your choice. Oh, yeah. if I can add my first aid check, then I can get myself two more dice. I thought you yeah, said yeah. medicine only. That did give me one hit. Uh, okay, you 
You do not have enough hits to meet the threshold. What about you, Kenny? Just one hit. Okay. Oh, Duffy's going to give it a look, too. All right. So hits are five and five or six? Right. Correct. Duffy's got two hits. That is enough. Um, <laughs> is two within your mental limit? Uh, my mental limit is five. All right, well done. So, a week. Uh, it looks like these bodies have been here for like a week. Um, Man, I, wonder why they, I wonder why they were even doing down here. I mean, I guess other than the obvious. So here, there is more information other than how long they've been dead. Um, you are able to determine that all three of these corpses were killed by blunt force trauma. Um, hmm. The dwarf took a single punch in the face that snapped his head back so violently it broke his neck. Uh, each of the humans was kicked in the groin and then had his neck snapped by a blow to the base of the neck. Damn. Can't uh, keep the girl boss down. You see also one of the humans is wearing an armor jacket and has an Ares Predator 5 with two spare clips of regular ammo. Uh, and they both have a low-grade comm link that is turned off. In this world, our guns aren't like genetically coded to you or fingerprint locked to you, are they? We can loot that gun. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Does anybody else? I I pick it up. Uh, all, I mean, all, I'm... all our Holoquin does is like open up like his <laughs> trench coat, and you see like the, he has one of each already holstered with also like an extra spare, you know, machine gun and two machine pistols on his hip. And he just closes it, and like he's good. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I thought. Uh, Duffy, do you, do you need another gun? I got the two I got's all I need. All right, I'll go ahead and take that Aries for myself. Free gun. All right. Free gun. I think we should. Uh, y'all think we should maybe check, like, click on one of these com these uh com devices and see if there's anyone at the other end. No, no, I don't think we should do that at all. I think that I think we should uh, hold on, and I'm uh, let me let me just get this clean, and I think I should clean this, and then we should leave. And uh, as far as everybody else knows, except the person we hand this data chip to, we were never here. Never where? That's why you're on my family plan, Duffy. <laughs> all oh, right. Boy. Okay. Um, you, so this you can is hear be Simon gonna... in your head just, or uh, Juan in your head just rolling his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you guys want to um, check out the table with the scalpel? With that table, and... yeah, because serious like removed cyber device on it. Was yeah. it like a SIM chip that's missing? Um, there, uh, there's a scalpel, a comm link. And a and a uh, uh, like an implant, a cybernetic implant on the table. D Duffy's eyeballing that implant and trying to trying to discern what what sort of implant it is. That is cyber technology plus logic. So if I just have logic, I That's just roll that. Right. Yep. <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah, that's I know what that is. I've seen those before. Uh huh. What is it? Fucking no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just bluffing. I don't want y'all to think I don't know things. Anybody <laughs> else want to take a stab at identifying the implant? Uh, it's just logic plus cyber technology. Well, I've only got three as well. Okay. So, uh, oops. Wow, that one went away. Uh, I, I got two failures. Two ones. Uh, 
a glitch. Out of three. You got a glitch. You got a glitch on trying to look at something and see what it is. Um, I mean, th there's just no way this glitch is significant in any way. You, you, right. I don't know. You knock the scalpel on the floor as you're trying to like look at this, this implant. All right. What about Win? Anything? Uh, I'm busy cleaning this data ch uh, data file, uh, and I'm going over. This is my first uh, sprite, so we're not in combat. So it's a simple action. No, I'm sorry. This is not a sprite. This is threading a complex form. So it is a complex action. I am going to roll software plus resonance. And uh, the way that cleaning works is that for every hit, I reduce the Overwatch score by one. So I'm going to go ahead and roll my cleaning, threading my complex form. And just, that sounds good to you? Go for it. All right. Okay. That was not a great roll. I didn't glitch, but I only got one hit. Okay. All right. So That's I not have a no idea. Uh. Am I just stuck with like, oh, they'll know we opened it? I did warn you. Yes, you did. All right. Well, they never told us not to open it. No, they didn't. All right. Well, great work, everybody. <laughs> Let's go find <laughs> Samantha. Good job. All go, right. Just tell them I said to look at it. Mm -hmm. I'm the nosy type. Oh, yeah. Um. All right. Anything else you guys want to do in here? Uh, but as If the room has been cleared... Uh... Harlequin's just going to walk out of the lab and sort of check out the restrooms and some of those other rooms that have been around them, see if there's been any activity. Um, no, it does look like someone fairly recently tore through those rooms looking for stuff, but um, they are deserted. Mm -hmm. No way to track which way the, whoever the individual left the room went? No. No. Well, yeah. Well, congrats to us for missing uh, whatever happened here. Eh, looks like some really nasty shit happened here. Yeah, Better I gotta agree with us. you on that one. Yeah, uh, Harlequin will go back in the room and he'll just pocket whatever that scalpeled out cyber device yeah. is to take it with us. Did okay. they give us a data chip or do I have to use one of my own data chips to download this data? Oh, they, you talked to them all over the link. They didn't give you anything. Ah, all right. Converting one of my data chips into this. Good thing I brought some data chips. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I guess we should head back up now. Head to this Maker Collective. Indeed. Yeah. It's pretty early for our break, but you guys are making good time. You, you want to take 10 minutes now and come back for the next scene? Sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. Grab, uh, grab some snacks real quick. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. <laughs> All right, we'll see everyone back in 10 minutes. All right. Welcome back. We are in Shadowrun, traipsing through the mystic land of Chicago on our way to a place called the Maker Collective, uh, where you guys have been sent to track down one Samantha, whose mental state you have been told may not be great. Uh, and um, yeah, so you know the Maker Collective is on the northern border of the zone. Um, and, and what general information you know about it is that it's it's a sort of organization 
collective formed by like-minded scientists and students <coughs> from the former Northwestern University in Evanston. Um, this is like a gadget center for mm. the whole area, um, though some say it's more like a whole district of mad science labs. Uh, it's full of industrial noise and funny colored acidic clouds, uh, occasionally explosions. Um, many techno geeks make do with improvised appliances and equipment or make sure ventilation, so it's not the safest place. Um, but their reputation for creating all kinds of useful appliances and gadgets from scrap has spread throughout the corridor and uh, draws people there to their weekly bazaars that take place uh, in, in the Maker Collective. Um, makers will work for anyone. They often get in the middle of rivalries between different zone lords. We've started calling dibs on them on the different eggheads there um yeah so that's kind of what <laughs> you know about the place in general um as you approach it there's new snow the new snow that's been falling all day seems to have stopped and you are pretty sure the roads haven't gotten any more treacherous since the morning um so yeah, th this place isn't so much a mall as it is like a small city in itself. It's like a bunch of strip malls and office buildings connected by canvas tunnels like a giant hamster cage. Um, and it's one of the few places around Chicago where the AR spam is as thick as the snow cover. Um, you hear the sounds of workshops and hardware manufacturing, even over the howling wind of Bug City. And the occasional gust brings the scent of ozone mixed with petroleum to your noses. Um, with the size of this place, you may be looking at a lot of legwork. Mm. I will start, do any of these devices use any tap into the matrix or are they all off the grid? No, there are matrix nodes around here. <laughs> oh. You guys are at the very edge of the zone where connectivity is, is pretty solid. <clears throat> Duffy's gonna walk up to the first, like, stall or like commercial looking person he sees okay. and asks do you, do you know excuse me do you know a samantha <laughs> uh yeah so this guy's a troll and um he... i mean i'm not judging what you do in your off time on the internet sir <laughs> <laughs> on, on the what uh he he's uh he just looks like a full-on mad scientist blacksmith he's got like a big leather apron a pair of tongs in one hand a big hammer in the other he looks down at you and says i know three people named samantha well do you know if any of them are the, are the young lady i'm looking for they better not be well, that's too bad for me then. What? Who are you looking for? Samantha. Any other information available about Samantha? I was told that she was at the Maker Collective. Okay, good luck. Thank you, Mike, kindly, sir. But it's, it's a dude, right? It's a dude, yes. As far as you can tell. Uh, I, I gesture you over and, and Harlequin, too. I'm like, okay, uh, uh, all right. Let's you know, when settle. it doesn't seem settle. like we've got a lot to go on about this. I was going to say, perhaps now is a good time to get back in touch uh, with our... <laughs> uh, with, with Mr. Uh, Kihuitl and uh let him know that we have found an abundance of samanthas 
And if he would like us to bring the correct one, he's going to need to provide a little bit more information. A picture would help. How it would. Nods. nods. Um, Perhaps I will go ahead and send that. Uh, can I send an, a message to our fixer from here and just say exactly what I just said? Found multiple Samanthas or leads on multiple Samanthas. Need more detail. Which one? Um, there is a, hold on a sec. You should have like, um, some social skills that would be involved here. Um, ugh. I, I want the social skills to be alphabetical after the resident oh, skills, but they're not. Ha! Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> where are the skill groups? Social skills. Yeah. We have performance, etiquette, instruction, and leadership. Leadership. Hmm. Is it what you're trying to do is use a contact to find information and that's like a thing in this game but i don't remember how it works let's see um influence test or right, let's see social modifiers npc all right Negotiation, that's leadership, intimidation. No, let's see here. Target role, no. I have an excellent memory. Can I suddenly remember some other key details <laughs> that Juan gave us about this woman? You know she's homeless. Tried... You yeah. know she's sinless. Plus, yep. And you know she's about 26. Oh, okay. That's a well, that different. definitely narrows it down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't just walk up to somebody and ask if they're sinless. Uh, uh, for the sake of our viewers, uh, sinless basically <laughs> means in this game, it base uh, your sin is basically like your social security number, and you can't do jack shit on the grid without it. So, right. uh, if being sinless means that you're basically a non-entity in the system. We're all like, Canadians in this game, apparently. Like, like if uh, you magically were, you know, created in a clone tank or something in this game, mm -hmm. right? Just, just on a whim. Mm hmm On a whim. Just some sort of crazy idea that Kenny had there. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> just going out on a limb there. Um. So yeah, that your memory works fine. Those are the things you know about her. Okay. Um, if you want more information, I'll just I'll just cut to the chase since we're having so much trouble with this context thing. Um, if you want more information uh, from your fixer, it isn't available. There are no photos okay. of this person. Well, okay. Um, I guess I will try approaching somebody. Um, who looks like uh, they are open for business and is selling something that looks of interest to me. Uh, I'm looking in particular for somebody who's selling like um, deck parts, uh, like pieces of a cyber deck. Uh, if there's, I don't know if there's like, I I'm imagining some sort of like open air bazaar where people are selling their, their goods and everything. Yeah. Um, Okay, I'll go ahead and look for somebody selling um, cyberdeck parts and approach them. Okay, uh, yeah, there's, just... a, mm -hmm. there's a dwarf surrounded by cyberdecks mm -hmm. that have been rebuilt. Um, I wanted to let you guys know also, in, this, in the Maker Collective, um, people repair and rebuild things out of spare parts uh, to mm -hmm. create items that are as good as the new ones. Um, mm -hmm. So while you are here, if anyone wants to 
buy stuff, you can buy any drug with availability up to six or any any gear from the book with availability up to six. Okay. Do you guys uh, so want to yeah, do any shopping before I... Thing. No. My read on you guys is that you were sick of shopping before the game started, but um, (laughs) just wanted to let you know. (laughs) Yeah, if there's anything we want to grab. Um, I actually will ask this guy if he's got any, while I'm looking over the parts, does he have any data chips? I just had to uh, Uh, use up a couple. Yeah, he does, actually. All right. Uh, How much? I know they're they're 10 new yen in the... Um, the thing does he? Yeah, he standard the same? standard standard prices apply. Yeah. Oh, fabulous. Uh, yeah. Let me uh, uh, let me grab ten of those, and I will get out a hundred new yen and sort of slide it discreetly across the uh, the table to him. Discreetly. Yes. He looks confused about why you're doing it discreetly. <laughs> He is well, selling you legal goods for for tender. Well, I mean, sorry, I don't want to flash a lot of cash. You know how it is. Yeah, young woman like myself in my yes late thirties. Uh, young woman like myself, <laughs> you know, out uh, out and about. Uh, yeah, a friend of mine actually. I was worried about her. She's uh, kind of well. Last I heard, she was around here. I, I don't suppose you know a, a, a Samantha, do you? She's uh, uh, like mid twenties. Uh, yeah, I know she's. You know, last I heard, she didn't have anywhere to stay. I've been kind of hoping to find her. Does that name ring a bell by any chance? Uh, I ran across a Sam. Yeah, uh, girl, human, mid twenties. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by she, any chance? She was bleeding pretty bad. Oh my gosh! Back of the head. When when was this? About about a week ago. Oh. Did she? We're we're talking about like Sam with like dark hair, right? I think so. Okay. Well, I shouldn't say she was bleeding. It looked more like she had been bleeding. She had she, okay. med kit, sewed it up. But yeah, something happened to her. Oh my gosh. Do you, do you know where, she, where I could find her? Did, any idea? Yeah, I helped her out, actually. I, uh, there's, a, there's a drug refinery up mm-hmm. around the bend over there. I, I think she got some work there. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Um, good luck with the all this, Ben. Thank you. I'm gonna grab these guys and. Well, while uh, Wynn is doing that, uh, Harlequin was looking to see if there was anybody selling like cyberware. Um. Yes, but what specifically are you looking for? Mm. Uh, not actually looking to sell anything. Or buy anything, but to 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 he's gonna pull out whatever the device was that they found on the operating table. You and pull just, it out, and he just holds it out silently. He doesn't say anything. He just holds it out and shows the merchant. Okay, this is an elf woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks down at what you're holding, cocks her head to the side, and looks up at you and says, "Who'd you take that out of?" It's still covered in blood. Right. he just kind of rubs it on his trench coat quietly and then puts it back out I'm not in the market for anything like that oh Oh, they all crashed there for a second but I think we're back yeah I see everyone okay she says she says I'm not in the market for anything like that and then just quietly says what is it in Elvish it's a kink bomb a cranial implant explosive. Interesting. 
<laughs> he, he, uh, uh, what what sets it off? Usually a button push, a remote control. Mm. All right, so he'll uh, thank you, and he'll just walk back towards <laughs> to Win and Duffy uh, with with just kind of holding it out in his palm. Trying to keep it as far away from him as he can, <laughs> but still he has to hold it. <clears throat> and then all he says is "bomb" <laughs> in in English. <laughs> and Duffy, Duffy will pluck that out of his hand if if Harlequin yeah. will let him. Oh, oh no, no, he definitely will. Let's go. <laughs> and, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, don't, don't they usually put these in like people's heads, like? I swear I saw some, some like old movie, and they put them like in the back of your head here. And if you if you're not doing good, not doing what they want, they, and it just blows your head right off. Uh, was that Total Recall? Uh, Suicide Squad? Uh, so he starts rattling off old movies that he may have seen. Oh, yeah, it was probably one of them. <laughs> Escape from <laughs> Escape from New York. There's a lot of head bombs in movies, right. is what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was probably one of them that I heard about it from, but... Okay. D Duffy gets a little quizzical, and... Um, when have you shared what you learned about... Um, from the, uh, the, the uh, deck salesman? Uh, sorry, say that again? Did you share? Did you already share what you learned from the deck salesman? Yeah, I share that with you guys. You know, I mean, call me crazy, but one of them tanks was empty. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And this Sam, we you got wind of, had been bleeding out the back of her head. That yeah, she was. Almost, you know, I'm wondering, you know, if she had something removed, you can leave that mm -hmm. the fuck alone, <laughs> removed from the back of her head. And I'm wondering if it was this little bomb right here. Mm-hmm. No. It would explain why she is homeless, sinless, and they would have a description of her, but anyway, but they wouldn't have any further info on her. <sighs> All right. Well, we've got a lead on a uh, Sam. Should we head over to the uh, to the drug refinery? That sounds like a plan. And saying that, Duffy tosses the bomb back to uh, Harlequin. <laughs> <laughs> Harlequin just think lets fast. It, no, he just doesn't think at all. He just lets it drop to the floor. Hmm. <laughs> We all kind of look at it. Right. It's like. And, and then Harlequin just uses his foot to kind of like move some dust and dirt on it, kind of make <laughs> a little pile to hide it. Yeah. <laughs> Tamps down on it and then walks away. I mean, it can't be that powerful if it goes right. inside your head. I'm sure that it doesn't. doesn't I mean, it doesn't need to be that powerful. No. Mm hmm. But powerful enough if one of us had it in their pocket and it exploded, it would probably do some damage. Um, so yeah, let's head to this, uh, let's head to this, uh, drug yeah. plant, whatever. Okay. All right. So you, uh, <clears throat> you find the drug refinery and there are some people working there. Mm hmm. Um, they do recognize Sam by her name and description. Um, contrary to what you heard of earlier, um, Sam has not been working at the drug refinery, but did attempt to get a job there some days ago. Hmm. Um, she's been doing like little odd jobs for them here and there. Um, and she has finally managed to get herself a squat in one of the rooms in the attached office building. Well, 
Perhaps we should we should pay her a visit. I think we should. Mm-hmm. We should be cautious, though. I mean, y'all y'all saw what what happened to them science people down in that basement. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Blunt force trauma. Mm-hmm. To the, I, mean, I can um, respect a good punch. This is the same gal. She uh, she goes low. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a reminder the, to you. She got the dwarf guys. in the head. <laughs> True. <laughs> Which is low on on uh, elf, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah. All right, so what's, how shall we approach? That's a good question. Yeah, you guys now know where she's been living, and it's pretty close by. I mean, real talk. We're talking about kidnapping this woman. Well, I mean, that's what the... Uh... That's what that stinky corpo was talking about. Was Juan with the corp? I'm so sorry. Can you remind me real quick? He didn't say. Thank you. No. That's why I don't like clients who rush me off the phone. Mm. So but we... it did, he wasn't doing it for himself. He was doing it for the Lone Star officer. But Rider. we don't. I mean, how much do you trust them rent-a-cops? Uh, you know, about as far as I can throw one. Which is not very far. I didn't max out that stat. So we have the the Dragon Corporation has asked us to just get the information. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got, we got theirs. Right, but someone's really desperate to get their hands back on the girl. Mm-hmm. Well, Lone Star officer. Maybe we should. And who knows who she knows why they want to get their hands on her. Right. Well, we can maybe approach it and ask her about her friend Nick, Nick Ryder, and Mm -hmm. see what reaction that gets from her. Yes. But we should be prepared for the worst. Yes. Lone Star officers can be... Well, I don't trust cops. Lone Stars aren't the worst cops out there, but they're not great. Okay. Um, So are you guys going? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's approach this uh, little lady's. All right. Abode. Um, yeah, you find the door to one of the abandoned offices. Um, let me put a little map up for you guys. <clears throat> so um, you you come in from this way. Sorry, from this way. Mm-hmm. And um, the office where you were told Sam has been squatting is this one. And we're right. coming in from the opposite of the locked entrance? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're coming from the north where it says exit to tunnels. I mean, is, does there seem to be a lot of activity in this domicile? Um, Yeah, uh, not a ton of activity. It does seem like pretty much every room here is being squatted in by someone. So uh, I guess when we first walk in, right, uh, Harlequin will sort of scan the hallways left and right to kind of see. Yeah, Duffy's going to engage his astral perception just to see if there's anything magical going on here 
Okay, I need a check from you. This is, um, do you have a sensing? Is that something you do? I'm not skilled at it. <laughs> okay, I need that plus intuition with All your right. your limit being astral. See how he goes. Well, I got a six. Just one? Just one. Okay, so you don't get much as you pass through most of the area. However, as you get over here to where you're close to Sam's squat, um, you start to detect someone in there that um, you think uh, is generally healthy uh, but malnourished. And that's all you've got. Well, there's someone in there. We, which one of us actually has some uh, charisma? I believe we established that that was Win. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. You, you want me to suck? What if I go in? With you guys out of sight, and I'll see if I can talk her into coming with us. So uh, Har Harlequin nods his head, and then he kind of walks to the east, kind of around that corner where that common area is. It's just sort of peeking around the corner, okay, trying to get a fiery <laughs> angle on the door. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't like it. I mean, if she turns hostile. That is a tight space, and you're going to be on your own. Yeah. Um, which office was it that she's in? I, I missed the one. The one just to the left of the oh. entrance. Okay. Well, well, what maybe, kind uh, of lock is that? Maybe Duffy can center himself, like in that little around the corner where it says locked entrance. Yeah. Okay. And that way you're right there to jump in if she... Yeah, that's, I think Duffy will hang out just, yeah, right around that corner. Just trying to keep his ears peeled. Okay. Or keep his senses peeled for any untoward anything. Yeah. I just want to look up one little thing, and then we will pull the trigger on this. Uh... <laughs> Stats for Mantis Possessed Clone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what it is. Uh, yeah, it's not anything. It's nothing. Um, cool. All right. I'm just going to completely ignore that thing because it's not in the index of the core book. Hmm. Uh, so when are you knocking? Uh, I will do a check for any devices that I see that I could possibly seize. I'm looking for cameras in particular or any other security measure that might be in this building. Or uh, not in the building as a whole, but, you know, within visual range of Sam's door. Uh, no, there's nothing like that. This isn't a place where they have security cameras outside your door. Okay, just making sure nobody's got like a jury rigged security system like the, I don't know, the landlord's got it set up or something. Okay, then I'll go ahead and knock. Um, you hear a long pause and then a sort of shuffling sound. Just very short. Hmm. Hello? Is it knocking again? Who is it? Um, uh, we haven't met, but I, I heard you were injured. Um, my name is, uh, Dorothy. Uh, and I have, 
I wanted to check and see if you needed anything, uh, if you needed food, medicine. Uh, I have some very excellent wares available for very reasonable price. Move on. I don't have any money. Well, maybe I can trade you for some uh, some information. I heard you uh, might know something about that triangle-shaped building. What? There's a triangle-shaped building with uh, the, what's it called? The two-headed faced guy. Janice. Uh, yes, I, I, that was, that was character. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> like, Daphne, I know. Uh, uh, does the name Janice mean anything to you? Who are you? Somebody that I hope can help you. Can we talk? Can I roll any kind of like charisma to persuade her? Yeah, go ahead and try that. Um, yeah. What have I'm going to. I think it's just. Is it just a straight charisma roll? No, I don't really have any. Nothing's ever straight. It would be a. <laughs> um... <laughs> Charisma plus a skill. Yeah, it would yes. be charisma plus a skill. Right. No, I don't have any skills in social, so I probably okay. am just gonna. Yeah, if, if you have no, if you don't have the skill you need, uh, then you just roll charisma, but you take a negative one. Oh, okay. When I say, when you say a negative one, does that mean negative one to my dice pool or yeah. negative okay. one to your dice pool? I have one success and I will say to her as I for my charisma mm -hmm. role I will oh gosh what am I going to say just look you can talk to me now there's other people who are looking for you I want to help you if I can you hear a tiny click on the doorknob. I open it and push the door open without walking in. What do I see looking into the room? This person. Um, okay. She is standing there in the these old green scrubs covered in dried blood mm -hmm. and she has this armor jacket that's several sizes too small for her and she's holding that Ares 5 that uh was not on the other guard after you mm -hmm. took the one you found from his friend um and she has it aimed at you like whoa Okay, I mean, fair. Talk. Look. There is... We were sent here. And I do say we, because I am not, in fact, alone. By a representative of... No time like the present. The truth. Uh, sent here by the Lone Stars, frankly. They want to know what happened to you. What, what, they want to know what's been going on. Who are the Lone Stars? What's a Lone Star? I am so glad you asked. The Lone Stars are the good guys. They know that there was I know that there was a horrible experiment I know that you got yourself out and I know you are 
on the run and hold up. You have no resources except, you know, that. And I nod to the gun. I mean, you can stay here and wait for somebody else to get caught up with you. Or you can let us get you out of here. Deliver you to somebody who can help you. And take a chance. Do we do another charisma roll? Do you have you have no charisma skills? Is that right? I can't see any charisma skills on my checklist. I just I maximized for oops, Daisy. Uh, maximize for oops, Daisy. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, no, no. Other than I do have street skills with Deckers, other TMs, fencers, fixers. Uh, but. No, I have no social skills. Um, you have street skills. Um, I do have some street skills. But only in terms of, like, those are knowledge skills, not, right. like, social ability skills, just in terms of what I, like, I know people. Roll me... If she's a decker, a hacker, a... a uh, another techno mage, a fence or a fixer. I might be able to kind of read that off of her, but yeah, but otherwise, me... I think it's just a straight charisma. Um, roll me charisma plus intuition. Okay. I'm giving you two attributes to roll rather than an attribute and a skill. All right, that's fair. And then minus one die. No, you're not rolling a skill, so you don't take the negative. Okay. That is uh, three hits. This is a Technomancer. You can tell. You can tell by the way she's looking around at, at other things. Wait. I say, wait, oh my gosh, hold on. You're, um, I look around for something in the area, like any sort of gadget or gizmo that I can connect to. Anything I can see in this area? Um, only her cyberware, which is shielded. Right. Well, I wouldn't want to go with that. No, I mean um, this. This is not. This is not a tech-heavy area. This is an abandoned office building that people squat in. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to think how to. Right. She's she's waiting for you to say something because you said. The Lone Stars are the good guys, and then you just started saying, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Um, <laughs> wait, wait. Um, okay, wait. Actually, first of all, if I gave her a... Well, she doesn't need it that immediately. Okay. Um, let me... Uh, let me show you something cool. Um, I want to pull out... I don't know if I can technomance a sensor tag. I don't know. What are you trying to That's, do? I just want to show her what I can do. And show her that I can do it too. Um, okay. So you do some technomancy. I do. I pull out my data chip. And I'm like... Or not my data chip, uh, my fancy sensor tag, and say, you can sense this, right? Um, and I will... So what technomancers do is they mm -hmm. manipulate the resonance. Yes. Um, so I'm going to say if you, are, if you are able to manipulate it in mm -hmm. front of her, then she will know, then she will know that. 
Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use one of my, I'm going to do another complex form. I'm going to use a uh, resonance veil. Okay. Uh, and so I, this is a complex form that lets the, the target believe something has happened in the matrix. So in front of her, I'm going to hold out this sensor tag and uh -huh. I am going to just focus on it, manipulate the resonance, and I'm going to make it look like it has i'm just gonna like snap it to life and make it look like it was activated and fill it in with somebody's blank data and obviously i'm doing it with resonance not with anything else um yeah so she looks at it and says oh okay Look, what, what does that mean? That means you're like me. That means... Did um, you? Look, I'm going to be frank. I, I, we were there. We were in the room. We saw the clone tanks. And I'm making kind of a mental note to myself here. I say out loud to um, go back. Uh, because I don't really know where um where i come from either um this is this is this is um uh whoa wow um just and i'm just gonna like have a moment just like ignoring her for a second just like huh interesting okay anyway sorry back to you uh sam sam um so Let's get real. I mean, we're already being real. Uh, did you wake up a week ago in, like, a room full of clone tanks and then just, like, kick the shit out of a bunch of people? Because, you know, good for you. Define a bunch. Three. Two humans, one dwarf. Maybe. Mm hmm. Did you take the thing out of your own head? Are you following me or something? Nope. Not intentionally. Look, I really think you should come with us. Why, and to here... meet a Lone Star? Yeah. Look, hear what he has to say. Why don't... Look, you know something about me now. You know a secret about me. And I think we both know that I don't, the reason I'm asking, like, you're aware of what's, you don't act like somebody who was born a week ago. You're aware of what people like us face in this city. I legitimately have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, okay, then you kind of missed that, that was like a big show of trust when I showed you that, like, I could do that. Um, and so maybe that wasn't quite as, like, trusting back as I thought it was that we kind of had a moment there. But that's okay. Look. What? <laughs> what we can do is very unusual. And, uh, nobody kind of likes it when you do it. Because it kind of freaks people out you know when you can just sort of like when everything just kind of gets kind of like shiny and fuzzy and you can just like look at something and make it do something oh people can't do that no no a lot of people can't do that and they don't like those of us that can't so is that why really they had need... me in a basement yes Almost certainly. Yeah. Um, okay. This is this has gotten like. Um, it's gotten a lot more talky than I thought this was gonna get. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Look, I really think you should come with me. 
just to meet this guy. And if you don't like it, me and my friends will be right outside and we'll get you out of there. Who's this guy? Uh, his name is Nick Ryder. Does that mean anything to you? No. He wants to buy you some pizza. Okay. All right, great. Um, I should have mentioned the pizza sooner. She will go with you. She is taking the gun. She is not even holstering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, By all means. And she is looking around nervously as yeah. she comes out of the room. Um, Duffy guys, and Harlequin, guys. are you guys coming out of hiding at this point or what? Not yet. I mean, define hiding. <laughs> <laughs> so Duffy is I'm just standing, just around, standing the corner. around the corner. <laughs> I was just trying to be inconspicuous so as to not spook the little lady. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you coming out from around the corner? Where sure. she can see you. I'll come out from around the corner. Hands up. Hands, guns where she can see them. Yeah. This is, uh, this is uh, another member of my family plan, Duffy. Uh, he's going to help get us, uh, get us to safety. There's one more person who's staying undercover. Oh, very undercover. I hand it to him. That's that's pretty good. Uh, He's over there. Let's. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does she just legitimately just see him? She doesn't. You can't see him, but she knows where he is. Oh, wow. That's very impressive. Can I use technomancy to like sense where Harlequin is? No. <laughs> Okay, I have to ask, Sam, real, like, time out. How did you know that? I just did. Okay. This is very interesting, because I can't do that. Uh-huh. Because you, we have overlapping skill sets, but you clearly have other things that I do not. Look, uh... Let's get to, we have some sort of vehicle, I assume, that we've been traveling around in. Yeah, you have a car. Let's get to the car. The adventure assumes we do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, Dump I think car, cars are available for the hot wiring all over Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the car. Do you, do you want, like... We can stop. We can get you like some clothes and some food on the way, if you like. I'm already wearing clothes. That you are. We can get you ones though that are less bloodstained. Uh, we are when we leave. This is called the CZ, and uh, you are going to be a, a little bit more conspicuous. I mean, you know, dried blood is always uh, in fashion uh, in Chicago, uh, in most parts of it. But uh, if you want to be a little more inconsistent, I mean, if you're comfy, we're, we're good. We're good. I just wanted to check and see if you would like something fresher. Uh, I guess so. Is okay, that a thing right. people do? They get yeah. fresh, fresh clothes? Uh, that is just a fresh just means clean. Yeah, they, people do clean their clothes, you know, at least once a month. How? Either it needs it or not. Uh, fun fact, do you, and I'm I'm gonna try to be walking her out as I explain the miracle that is um, uh, soap. She. So w as you talk with her, you realize that there's like, there seems to be no pattern to the things that she knows and doesn't know about how to live a life. Like, she knows yeah. how the gun works, and she rolls her eyes at the idea that you think she doesn't know what soap is. Uh, but she doesn't know how to, like, go about washing the clothes. Um, mm -hmm. Probably because she's in a situation where she has no washing machine or anything like that. And she's just like, how do people get these things? Um, but you... Um, yeah, you experience you you experience this a number of times as you talk with her, where it's like 
there's one thing that she just thinks is obvious common knowledge and then something else that's also common knowledge that she just doesn't know. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of escort her, uh, just get her sort of tucked away in the car, maybe like buy like a little street food snack on the way, and as soon as like, the, um, get her into the car first, close the door, turn to Duffy and Harlequin and be like, okay, I've known her for about um, 20 minutes. Uh, and if anything happens to her, I'm going to kill everyone. And uh, so, uh, uh, so how are we feeling? She's just staring at you with wide eyes after you say that. Well, I closed the door on her. So sorry if that. Oh, I thought you got in with her. I thought you got in with her and closed no, no, the no. door. Okay. okay. So that's why I said yeah. I put her in the car first, closed the door, and turned to these guys. Sorry. Okay, She's so fun fact, just... she is still staring at you after you say that through the window. Yeah, I say that, and I glance down at her, catch her stare, turn back to these guys. And I think she heard me say that. Uh, so, here's well, what we're going to do. I guess just have to make sure to keep, like, keep her safe. Yeah. So the deal was we're going to take her to meet the Lone Star officer. I say we stick around and make sure this guy has, and I glance back at her, the good intentions that he totally said that he did uh, before we leave. All right. Uh, because it has been like, you know, four hours and none of us has shot a gun in all that time. So. Right. <laughs> Well, it's a so, good thing. Yeah, I hear it's easy. really complicated. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing that one we're of our probably... conversations before the stream. So, so uh, Harlequin walks over to the car, right? Opens mm -hmm. the trunk and looks, sees like all the you know excess materials, and then he just moves stuff in the trunk, boxes over, so there's like a nice long space. Mm -hmm. And then Harlequin climbs into the trunk and, and closes himself into the trunk for surprise. <laughs> yes, think... he's going to pull off the young gun's trunk. Oh. Just for the element of surprise. <laughs> yes. On anybody. Nice. On whoever. <laughs> well, well done. All right. <laughs> and I just nod and be like, yeah, that's, that's normal. <laughs> That's normal. Completely normal. Okay. Are you guys getting in the car then? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Duffy, do you want to drive? I mean, I got this license, but technically, I don't know how to drive. I'll drive. <laughs> oh, why? Thank you, Sam. That 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 would be great. And she gets out of the car gets back into the driver's seat, <laughs> sits there for like a couple of minutes and then says, I don't know how to drive. Oh. <laughs> I can swim. Do, do, do any of us know how to drive? You guys have driven everywhere you've gone today. So one of you knows how to drive. <laughs> Well, Not then, like very slowly <laughs> without great Harlequin, skill, right? Harlequin, he just climbed into the trunk. Quinn <laughs> <laughs> and, and Duffy and Sam are all just standing, looking at like you guys. It's a you manual. guys, I don't know how to drive a stick. You guys all know how to drive, okay? <laughs> okay, we all know how to drive. Okay. Okay, then Duffy, Duffy will take the wheel. Okay. Duffy take the wheel. <laughs> Sam moves over. Yeah. Why, all right. Why we is the other one in the new. trunk? Apparently, I think that is Why is the other guy in the trunk? <laughs> he likes it. Because he's a very silly person. <laughs> okay. Well, I All mean, right. to be clear, oh. it is strange, but he likes it and he is a very silly person. 
All right. I think I like silly people. This is a fantastic journey of discovery that we are on with you, and I am just really glad to be a part of it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, she she actually says, um, which which guy's gonna buy me pizza? Um, Nick Ryder. Oh, and that's if... not one of these guys. No, no, we're taking you to meet uh, Officer Ryder. Officer. And Ryder. if Officer Ryder doesn't buy you pizza, I will personally buy you some pizza. I haven't eaten. Might today. not be. A... Uh, I bought her a snack. You did. Yeah, I said on yes, like on our way to the so car. Bad. I said I bought her a snack from a food vendor. Didn't hear it at all. Ah. Well, Literally. then she's putting it into her mouth, saying, "I haven't eaten today." Yeah. Yep. I just nod. Yep. It. All right. Uh, punch it, Duffy. <laughs> <laughs> You hear Harlequin from the back yell, Regulators! Let's ride! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you roll up to uh, the pizza place. It smells good. It smells like meat and cheese. Mm -hmm. As soon as you walk in, the hostess takes you to a table near the window, uh, brings you guys whatever it is that you order. There's a dude there in a trench coat and a fedora. Uh, let me show you the dude. Mm. I'm going to turn off one of these and I'm going to put up Nick Ryder. Okay. He is uh, not wearing his fedora in this picture, but he does have a fedora canonically. Um, I thought you were going to say he has a fedora aura. About him. He definitely, <laughs> like, you can tell that this guy owns several fedoras and none of them are in good shape. Like, you could tell that just by looking at him. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that right. coat's full of cigarette burns and he's nursing a bourbon. He looks up at you. Great pizza place. Sells bourbon. Hell yeah. Yeah. He looks up at you, flashes a Lone Star badge, says, Detective Nick Ryder, I understand you found Samantha Carroll. She just kind of stares at him. Yeah, we wanted to ask you about that. Um, and really quickly, sorry to retcon something, but before we get out of the car, I tell her, you know, just for... Let's not say anything to him about what you or what I can do. Let's see what he knows before we volunteer information. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Back to the moment. I'm like, yeah. So I'll slide in the booth uh, across from him. Uh, so... What exactly uh, is it that my uh, that uh, that Miss Carroll can assist you with, officer, detective, detective officer? What what she can assist me with? <laughs> well, paperwork mostly. He reaches in his coat and pulls out uh, an old yellow folder, like yellowed from age mm. that mm. says carol comma samantha on it and it has a lone star case number and he puts it down i don't like cold cases there are a lot of them in chicago like this one about the kidnapping of a six-year-old girl in broad daylight in october 6 2053 My first case as a detective. She was taken right off the street in front of her school. No witnesses. 
girl was never found. Family left Chicago when the bugs hit in 55. Like to think they found a way to move on with their lives. He downs the bourbon and says, They say you shouldn't get so attached to people in your cases. Just clear them and close them, they say. They also say what happens in your first week won't haunt you for the rest of your career. Well, that definitely doesn't sound true to me. Mm, me either. Thanks for your work. I'll take it from here. Well, hold on. What exactly are your intentions? Miss Carroll came here under our protection. I intend to take Miss Carroll back to her family. Just uh, really quickly, Game Master, uh, 53, what, what year is it right now? 72. 72. Uh, I look from him, wait, 72, okay, I look to Samantha, so yeah, okay, so the ages make sense, so I just wasn't, just making sure that they hadn't, you know, multiply, multiply, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, they didn't super age her, this man yeah. is telling you she's been missing for almost 20 years, yes, all right. And she looks exactly like all the other clones in the facility. Yeah, she right? sure does. Yeah. Um. So I give me. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um. No, you would you would know this when you would just know this. Um, mm -hmm. Technomancers have not been a known quantity for very long, historically yeah. speaking. Uh, if she was taken 20 years ago, it may have been the case that she was taken because of that. Yeah. I assumed she was. Yeah. That is pretty much what happened to me. Um, so I'm going to kind of squint at him. Mm, inside check. Uh, or, sorry, <laughs> judge intentions check. I yeah. beg your pardon. Yeah, go ahead. That's gonna be <laughs> four hits. Uh, yeah, you are looking at a grizzled, hard boiled detective. Uh, who puts up a badass front to everyone, but actually just wants one damn thing to go right. And uh, it seems to have gone right, and now you're not giving him the girl. All right. I turn to Sam. Sam, you have heard what the detective has said. Um, would you like to go with him? Would you? you we did tell her that you were going to buy her some pizza. He looks down at his own plate with a slice on it that he hasn't touched yet, and he just slides it over to her. All right. Sam? She's eating it. She looks at him and says, you're going to take me to my family? He says, yeah, I know where they're living. She says, is that, is that the lady with the, with the long hair? He said, what, your mom? And she swallows her 
enormous mouthful of pizza and says, I didn't think she was real. I thought I made her up. Hmm. He says, God damn it. Gets out of his seat. Goes over to the counter, buys her another piece of pizza. <clears throat> I lean in. I'm like, hey, while he's getting the pizza, like Duffy's here, Sam's here. Uh, Harlequin, are you still hiding in the car trunk? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm going to message you <laughs> on your device. <laughs> and just like... With a comm link. <laughs> uh... And just say, Ryder seems on the up and up. You can come in if you want to, but only if you want to. You keep having fun. <laughs> uh, Harlequin will, like, push the back seat, you know, how sometimes from the trunk you can get into the back seat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. out that way. Awesome. Yeah. But he's, he'll scan while, he, but uh, what he's going to do instead is then scan the outside. Uh you know, just to, of the facility to make sure there's no ambush on the way out. Okay. Hey, um, so guys, before he gets back from the bar, um, Sam, do, what are your feelings on letting him know that he has actually been about 11 times more successful in closing, uh, in finding you? What do you mean? Um, how do I put this? Um, She's talking about all them other clones of you that were in that facility. Yes, that's the thing. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh. Well, I don't know if they're... It, it... What do you think? I think it would be the right thing to do. Well, there's a lot but... of other people there, but I don't know if they're really people or not. True. There is no way to know except to try look i'm not gonna lie here sam i'm complete I, I i am probably not the the person who like is uh, i'm not an ethics person <laughs> you put it like that writer comes back says you need an ethics person i know a guy really uh sort of yeah that's what i figured well, Sam looks up at him and says, I was in a lab and they made 11 clones of me. <laughs> yeah, that's why we were thinking we might need an ethics person. Ryder immediately demands to know the location of the lab. Yeah, sure, man. I'll I tell him. All right. Um, he I am pulls... going to keep the contents of the data that I that we found uh, I am not going to share that with him. That's fine. Uh, he will, pulls out. Have, yeah. He pulls out an old padlock bank bag. It says, "This is from Juan. It's your payment, as promised. Thanks for your help." He picks up that file that he put down. Finally, close this one. Uh, and that's it. Very you guys thoroughly. have done it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have done it. Uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks, um, you do hear back from Nick. Um, he has... Oh, uh, yeah, also you you deliver the information uh, mm -hmm. to the other guy, uh, to Simon. Uh, he does make some snarky comments about how you couldn't keep your eyeballs off it. Um, he <laughs> pays you but he, uh, you, you lose rep with him for not minding your own business. Um, All right, that's fair. Yeah, you're not going to get a job from him again. 
but um, mm -hmm. but Ryder um, makes a stink about trying to get the Lone Stars to raid this lab, and he is denied because it, it the department considers it corporate territory as a claim on the real estate has just been made. Mm. Oh, I bet I can guess who by. Yeah. Well, uh, Samantha, uh, he tells you, does get home to her mother, who now lives uh, far away, uh, and begins going to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you guys each just made 7,000 new yen apiece, mm -hmm. and uh, you, yeah. scored, you scored points with Juan and Nick Ryder and the Lone Stars in general. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, you've definitely it, got... It, it, the cops like us. <laughs> Overall, yeah. hey, they, uh, the, 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 gris the grizzled hero cop likes you. That's a good thing. Yeah. Right. That means he. That means he's gonna come to you when he's at the end of his rope someday. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well. Well done, guys. Um. Yeah. There was a whole bunch of corporate intrigue going on about who owns the property. Someone bought it from someone else. To be honest, even I couldn't keep it straight while I was reading it. Uh. <laughs> but like. Someone, yeah, some company bought some other company, and basically they're trying to act like they owned it all along so they can get mm -hmm. the research out of it. But the the upshot is uh, Sam has been the subject of technomancy experiments since she was six years old and has no memory of anything. She didn't even know her name was Samantha. She thought it was Sam. Oh. Uh, yeah. So... That's fun, uh, but you guys helped her out. Uh, this was an interesting one because as it's presented, there's right. no reason. Like I'm reading this and I'm just like, no group of player characters I have ever run a game for would take this girl to some random guy after they rescue her from a clan. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Every, everyone would be like, well, obviously we need to sell her we need to get her into an underground railroad or something like she's what the hell uh yeah. but s somehow you guys reasoned your way into the meeting and it turns out to be the right thing to do for this one <laughs> right yay well that's why we, i was like be ready for like an ambush or yeah. to right. shoot yeah. our way out like yeah handy handy it over the, the the victim to random people i mean he yeah. is a lone star operative right which yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably the only reason you guys met him, right? Is because he was a cop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was I mean, that was the only thing. I was otherwise... just kind of going along with everybody else. I mean, that didn't really weigh well for him. But <laughs> handing her over. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got a weird question. Yeah. Simon, does it list a meta type for Simon? Oh, yeah. I was wondering that myself. It does not. He just, it says... I think he's intentionally unique. It says he appears to be a bipedal lizard man. Yeah, he's he's a serang. It's an Earth Dawn thing. It's that that is some mildly deep shadow run cuts. Right, because that's, um, that's from back when Earth Dawn was like pre Shadow Run, Shadow Run. Right. Yeah, I show I I went ahead and just showed you guys the picture, but yeah, it basically uh, it 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 instructed me to describe him as a humanoid dragon. Well, that's because so that picture, I mean, it's this isn't going to be that, but because yeah. Earth Dawn was by Fassa as well, right? It was kind of like the... originally, yeah, but now it's a completely different, yeah. Uh, like Earth, Dawn, Earth Dawn was like the kind of like Warhammer to Warhammer 40k, right? So yeah, well, it was right. like the yeah, it's like the it was like the fantasy, right? Not cyber fantasy, fantasy fantasy version of. Uh, right. So ugh, whatever. Yeah. So I'm tossing something into the. I'm just tossing a link into the Discord for 
ooh, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, because he... Not... Oh. Yeah. So, so Rain, yeah, lizard, amphibious, humanoid with long tails and a flare for dramatics. That's the one, right? Yeah. Gotta be. Yeah. Yeah, but... well, that was the impression that I got reading about yeah. Shadowrun, is that the lore is really deep, and the different editions of the game are actually not as... Um, not as different from each other as they are with like D and D or some other games where like every new edition you can expect just basically a completely different game. Um, well, this is, I mean, this is significantly like, or at least fairly different from like first or second edition shadow run. Uh, like I, I, I don't, I mean, it, it, it is because like i mean the the attributes are different from what i read it was only incrementally different from four and that six was only incrementally different from this and i kind of just extrapolated that uh you know whatever I differences mean, like from one and two were wildly different yeah yeah but it, it i would say I, i'd say like i i don't know what third edition is like Mm. I can't. I think that's the one I have. Is that's third. the one? Yeah, that's the one you have. I have a copy of Fourth Edition. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it was a dollar at my library, a local library book sale. Yeah. There, I ran across a conversion guide from Fourth to Fifth, and uh, it was not long. It was the shortest Shadowrun document I encountered. So I was like, that must be pretty, pretty similar. <laughs> what, I, what I liked about Shadowrun, which we didn't get to do, is I kind of liked their initiative system. I liked that, too, and I couldn't figure out who the hell you were supposed to use it on. Uh, the only person you might have fought was Samantha herself. Oh, wow, uh, okay. But I was so just... Built, I built a character for combat, and we didn't have any. <laughs> uh, probably yeah. a good thing, all things considered. But, um, <laughs> like, there were... There were like people I could have thrown in, like extra people, but right, uh, yeah, no, oh, no, it, it, it wasn't for that sake, but it was just the like, yeah, because what I like about Shadowrun is like the for those who don't know is like you you roll up your initiative and you can actually get pretty high, and then you go in order of like the it, it's like a decimal system, right? So you go by the highest number, like a a not let's say like you rolled a. 29 well okay you have a nine so you go first and then you kind of go but then at the end of the round you then deduct 10 from everyone's initiative and then if you know okay you go around again because you know but whoever rolled below said 10 like they're done right that was their one action and now they're stuck so if right. you actually have like a huge amount of initiative you can actually get like multiple attacks um yeah Yeah, so it's like you you could have more than one turn per round if your initiative is high enough. Yeah. Uh, if Which it's is... a 29, you'd get three turns in that round. Right, exactly. Which is why I had my initiative set at 15 plus 46. <laughs> <laughs> I was just hoping for like, oh, I want to shoot a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, I if I had been more confident in the system, I might have had Samantha flip out and attack you guys, but right. uh, yeah. I was just like we're getting close to the end and I don't know oh, how yeah, 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 how yeah. it works. Yeah, Duffy was ready with trank patches. Right. I All right. The but the actual combat rolls I forgot. <laughs> To me, the attraction of this game... I was also very interested in that initiative system. Uh, I'm a little bit bummed it didn't come up either. But uh, to me, the attraction of this game is more the lore and the world than any of mm -hmm. the mechanics. Um, I just feel like, in my opinion, this is just really overcomplicated for game mechanics. Yep. Like, like yeah. you, you could take all this lore put it in either cyberpunk or D, D instead of this system and uh it would be better yeah well i mean you could do it in fate you could do it yeah yeah i i think they just kept whatever because it's owned by i don't know is it still fafsa or is it a no it's, on, it's owned by fucking tops man oh wow yeah so i i think they just kind of decided to keep the old game engine for the most part yeah. uh because like I mean, even from 
Yeah. Yeah, there are people that love the complexity. There are people that are all about right. the crunch. Uh, yeah. I'm not, not right. necessarily one of them. Like, I like it when the mechanic is cool and unique. That's why I thought that initiative system was cool. But that's right. kind of the only thing in this game that I saw that I was like, oh, I'd like to try that out. Yeah, because yeah, what, what reminded me of it is, although not quite as unique, it's like the old like first and like an optional rule second edition D and D thing, which was like, well, if you attack with a piercing weapon against this Gosh. armor, right, you get like a you know because it's like you know, yeah. you know it's just like there was a point where it's just like for the weapons, like well, it has this recoil, this accuracy, this damage. And this armor piercing status, and then it's like, fuck, if you're like, you know, there's just so much math, right? Like, yeah. Like, if we actually did a combat, you'd have to sit there and figure out, like, okay, I rolled this much damage, well, I rolled this much accuracy, but now they've put a limit, right? Because due to my physical limit, I can only get so many successes. You know, it's just, yeah, it's just I, tr like I tried to parse some of the combat stuff. I think if I'd had Samantha attack as soon as Wynn knocked on the door, we'd still be doing that combat right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And and I got it with their system because it's like okay, if I have like a reaction of nine and a gun skill of six, technically I'd roll fifteen dice, but you don't want to necessarily allow me fifteen successes. So okay, you have a limit, but it just, it just yeah, it just became yeah. Anytime I lot. see you have to divide something by three. <laughs> <laughs> right it's that like, shouldn't that shouldn't be part of any system <laughs> right yeah yeah all right shadow run love hate relationship uh yeah. maybe we'll try yeah. again someday yeah uh thanks guys for playing this with me this is one. Yeah. this is one of the ones that was on the list for for a long time just because mm -hmm. i had it yeah um so yes. we've given it a shot M maybe not a super great shot but we gave it a shot uh and uh yeah we'll see you next week uh does anyone remember what's next week give me a sec next oh. week is next week is, next our, week haunt. is our haunt oh uh, so yes if it's anyone that. wants to sign up you know i'd really love to have some people sign up um for a like cozy spooky uh sort of deal it's like we're all we're all ghosts in the same haunted house right Yes. Oh, I think I remember seeing you guys talk about it on the Discord. Yeah, I yes. didn't read too much of it, but uh, whatever, I'm up for it. I mean, it's it, it's not it's not as dense as say Fifth Edition Shadowrun, <laughs> right? <laughs> How does it compare in density to say Wander Home? It's pretty <laughs> um, significantly less dense, um, but maybe a little more focused. Okay. Yeah, like if I, I didn't think Wander Home was that dense to begin with. Well, the the player kit, the player kit we played wasn't. Right. right. The full right. book has a lot more stuff in it. I was gonna yeah, say because like on the scale from like Morkborg to Conan, <laughs> um, I put it like if you were doing a scale of like Conan, right? Morkborg, right? Hold on, there we go. So our haunt like complexity, like complexity wise i'd put maybe like here okay all right like, below. it's if you want did you watch the uh wander home session yeah yeah i was watching it's it is so much that oh okay no worries. just d just a lot of different stuff but like the the, yeah. the basics of it with the tokens and you know you can do this you can do this if you spend a token you can do this gotcha okay uh it's but a it's a no dice thing. Items. It's a diceless or, system. Yes. Huh, cool. All right. Well, uh, I'm gonna sign out. Yeah. Thanks for playing, guys. Late. We'll catch everyone next week. Bye. Right, Good night, guys. everybody. Good night. Bye. Good night.